So, Nvidia has finally announced the RTX 4000 series graphics cards, and with what they're calling the new Ada Lovelace architecture. Now, it was a pretty slick presentation, wasn't it? But there's a lot of things that Nvidia didn't tell you, and that's what I want to talk about. Because some of it's interesting, and some of it will make you ask, what the Let's start right at the top with the claims Nvidia is making here, because supposedly, every one of the new RTX 4000 series graphics cards will put the best of the RTX 3000 series cards to shame by giving two to four times the performance increase. But let's throw some cold water onto that claim right away because it's not like you're gonna boot up CSGO at 1080p and automatically get 3000 frames per second, are ya? This is in some very, very specific handpicked games with ray tracing enabled like Flight Simulator, Portal RTX, and an internal NVIDIA demo called Racer X. Even the few performance charts they've shown are super slanted towards 4K gaming with ray tracing enabled. And hey, they've also turned on the new DLSS 3 frame generation, which is something I'd like to talk about later. So yes, it's shocking to see graphed out like this, but we're talking about a very, very narrow selection of games. And what does that mean for gaming outside of NVIDIA's friendly ray tracing titles? Well, this is what they said. For rasterized games, ADA is up to two times faster, and it's four times faster for ray traced games. Okay, so you get up to double the performance in regular rasterized games, and I think that's still a huge, huge number, and that sort of makes sense when you look at the performance per watt graph NVIDIA showed. I mean, sure, ADA will be more power hungry on high end, but it also offers much, much better theoretical, yes, theoretical performance at every power level. It also looks like there's gonna be some pretty sick rendering speedups as well, and that's important for creators like myself and other digital professionals. Using up to 70% less time on a project being rendered out is pretty game-changing. The all-new H7? What's not to like? It's like a perfectly tuned guitar or a sharpened knife, keeping the user happy and your hardware safe. The best part is the redesigned interior that is full of potential with 360 rad support at the top and front, including 140mm mounts, a totally new cable management system and cable bar with of course vertical GPU support with this Gen 4 PCIe riser kit. The 3K styles are made to suit your needs with the flow being my favorite. I think this is the way to full tower your next build. Check out the new H7 when your heart desires. The specs here are interesting too. The top dog will be the RTX 4090, and it's a beast compared to the RTX 3090 Ti in almost every way. It's got way more CUDA cores, much, much higher clock speeds, and also updated RT and tensor cores. The interesting thing is the memory interface hasn't really changed since we're still looking at 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 running on a 384-bit memory bus. What we don't know is the speeds of the memory itself, but uh, based on what's being produced by Micron, um, I'm thinking it's safe to say from 21 to 23 gigabits per second. Then there's the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte, which still gets high clock speeds, but a serious cut down in the number of CUDA cores from over 16,000 on the 4090 to just under 10,000. Memory gets slashed to 16 gigabytes on a 250-bit bus too. In a lot of ways, this looks like an RTX 3090, but with a smaller, narrower memory subsystem and higher frequencies. But the real, what the actual F of this lineup is the RTX 4070. Uh, oh wait, hold on, hold on. I made a mistake. It's the RTX 4080 12 gig version. I have no freaking idea what NVIDIA was thinking of this thing. I mean, sure, it technically runs at a bit higher clocks than the 4080, but it gets its knees cut off with just 7,680 CUDA cores, which is a lot less than the RTX 3080. And it's an 80 series card with, uh, yeah, an RX 6700 level 192 bit wide memory interface. Look, maybe, just maybe, NVIDIA is gonna announce these new cores come with some kind of next generation alien inspired technology cache system that makes regular memory nearly obsolete. But uh, we all know that that's not gonna happen. Honestly, why Nvidia didn't just call this an RTX 4070 is a mystery. And I'm sure that's something that only Jensen can solve. And pricing for these cards is pretty interesting too. But the goalposts have been moved again with the 4090 costing a bit more than the 3090 and the RTX 4080 16 gig aligned with the RTX 3080 Ti instead of the vanilla RTX 3080. Even the RTX 4080 12 gig gets in on the action at $900, which is $200 more than the RTX 3080. At least now we know why it's called the RTX 4080 instead of the 4070, because people would go insane if Nvidia tried to pass off a 70 series GPU for 900 freaking dollars. I mean, these things are hella expensive, and I 
hate seeing it, but uh, I guess it's a bit understandable since Nvidia still has to sell through a massive stockpile of 3090 and 3080 series cards that are selling below MSRP. Then again, I think the next few months might be a great time to buy a 3000 series graphics card and skip the 4000 series completely. I mean, heck, I'm still using a 2080 Ti at home and I have no plans of upgrading. Now this whole price situation is hypothetical since actually finding any GPU at MSRP has been impossible for the last two years. But we're finally seeing something at least resembling normal after the crypto mining craze and crash, so maybe we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. Or maybe that light is the approaching train of crazy power consumption. And look, all those rumors of GeForce cars guzzling back over 600 watts have been proven wrong. That was never, ever gonna happen on the desktop platform, at least not yet. Right now, typical board consumption seems right in line with the previous generation's highest end cards, and that's good news for the performance per watt. If Nvidia can actually deliver on that two times performance per watt, even in regular games, without ray tracing or other fancy RTX technologies enabled, these things, my friends, mm, they're gonna be they're gonna be wicked fast. This also makes you wonder what kind of juice something like the RTX 4090 Ti is gonna need if it uh, ever comes out. But then again, the price of that thing is probably gonna be unreachable. Now, one of the things you'll need to take into account is that all of the RTX 4000 series cards use the new 16-pin PCIe Gen 5 power connector, not the NVIDIA-specific 12-pin that they came out with the RTX 3090, 3080 series, and so on. That means the RTX 4090 and 4080 16GB will come with a triple 8-pin to 16-pin adapter, while the 4080 12GB will have a dongle with two 8-pins. Now, if you're looking for a native 16-pin cable, the 4080 12GB will need one rated for at least 350 watts, while the other two cards need a minimum 450 watt spec. Speaking of PCI Gen 5, while the RTX 4000 series might use the new power connector, Nvidia has chosen to stick with a Gen 4 graphics interface this time. And that makes complete sense since even with so much computing horsepower, the RTX 4000 series won't anywhere be near the saturation point of a PCI Gen 4 slot. Plus, there might be other benefits too, like less complication on the chip side, uh, some power savings and whatnot, but we'll only know more about that as the launch comes closer. Now, another thing that you might have missed is the cooler NVIDIA showing on the Founders Edition cards. It might look the same as the one on the 3090, but uh, they've actually made some subtle differences. First of all, we've been told that the internals have been completely updated and it might look like the fans gone supersized, but it's a combination of a slightly bigger fan along with a bit narrower shroud. And the card has also shaved some length going from the 3090 Founders Edition's 313 millimeters to 304 millimeters. It still isn't huge, but still, on a huge triple slot GPU, every millimeter matters. Now, another interesting thing popped up too, and that's this. On Nvidia's site, it looks like the RTX 4080 12 gate won't be available as a Founders Edition. So you're only gonna be limited, or at least you're only gonna get the 4090 and the 4080 16GB. Then there is SLI, you know, the multi-GPU technology that's been around forever, yet simply refused to die. Eventually, it morphed into NVLink on the RTX 3090 series, but uh, even that's gone now too, because most games just don't support multi-GPU acceleration, and NVIDIA is used to spend tons of resources making sure that SLI functioned properly on the driver's side. Plus, with GPUs this powerful, I don't think... I mean, is it really necessary? Now, there are technologies like DLSS that allows for higher frame rates, and that's now morphing into DLSS 3. One of its new features is called optical multi-frame generation that interprets data coming from a game engine and creates new frames using AI acceleration. That means even higher frame rates than DLSS already achieves. Yes, I know that's a huge oversimplification, but we're putting together a video about DLSS 3 with a lot more detail, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, I guess Nvidia needed a killer app for those tensor cores, and this might be it, because what they showed is pretty crazy with frame rates shooting through the roof, even with RT enabled. Now, there are two catches though. Since the Ada Lovelace architecture has an optical flow accelerator built into it, DLSS 3 will only be available for the RTX 4000 series. Also, DLSS 3 needs in-game support, so it'll be tied to games that include it. Luckily, Nvidia has a pretty big list right now. The only thing is we'll have to wait and see how many actually roll this technology out. Now, one of the small things that I picked up is what I'm actually more excited about. 
It looks like Nvidia is updating their NVENC media encoder and expanding to AV1 support. Now, AV1 is a pretty big deal for streamers since it adds a lot more recording efficiency to streams and visually that increases image quality. And that's the tip of the iceberg too, because Nvidia has added another NVENC encoder to the RTX 4000 series, which means there are now two, that's right, two that work in parallel uh, that can do different tasks at the same time. And the overall speed up can be pretty insane in something like Resolve. And guys, this is something that I'm super excited about. It could change my workflow completely. Now, this also allows you to record up to 8K at 60 frames per second content in real time through GeForce Experience or OBS Studio. Plus, in the past, you could only encode up to three concurrent streams on every GeForce card that I can remember. Now, if you want to increase that, you'll need to step it up to the Quadro series. Will we now be able to handle six streams at once without hack drivers? Well, I guess we'll see. So there you have it. RTX 4000 series is finally here. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. If you guys have any specific comparisons or anything that needs to be addressed, again, chime in, in the comments down below and we'll definitely bring it up in our performance review. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna peace out. Like literally, I'm gonna peace out.